we are now. We're recording. Okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome everyone to the sellout show where we are always sold out. I am Diana Guerin and I am the co-founder of Trade Show Makeover, where we help companies stop leaving money on the trade show floor. Hey, Diana. Hey, everyone. I'm Sean Carroll Sandy. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of the Selling Agency, where we coach humans how to sell to other humans because selling like you are the villain in every superhero story, uh, you know, it never works out for the villain. They always get that two things. You either get blown up <laughs> or you get led away in handcuffs and you say, I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> <laughs> either way, if it's all about you and only your way, you're going to lose. Yeah. That's okay, that's perfect. So um, I'm really excited to uh, introduce our guest star today. And it's kind of perfect because he is all about the video, which of course we're all about the video. And of course, we're going to have sort of a how to do it right and how to not do it right. So if you look at Sean Carroll Sandy, she's doing it right. If you're looking at me, my poor dead camera died, so I'm doing it wrong on my laptop. But um, Seti, uh, CEO of One Mob, um, absolutely amazing, uh, fiery, zesty personality. Um, you're perfect for the sellout show. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about video. Well, happy to be here. Thanks, Diane. Thanks. Sean, this is fantastic for me. It's just about, you know, helping people understand that video has a really compelling, you know, place in the sales cycle and the sales motion. And, you know, we started our company about four and a half years ago because we really believe these consumer trends continue to influence the enterprise and we wanted to make that simpler. And yeah, you know, a lot of it is just about not really understanding what video is. Everyone understands what video is. I think it's just more about helping people understand that it is a bit of a, a change in behavior change in culture and so we want to help people think about how to approach that in an efficient way in a scalable way in a way that's going to enhance what you currently do versus kind of obstruct it okay you just brought up something that just clicked with me I, I think people are looking at video as a tool it is a tool it's a resource it's a tool in your sales kit but until you just said that, I don't think a lot of people recognize this is a shift. Uh, our adoption, our use, our reliance, our love for video in every in all capacities is a shift culturally. And it's not, you know, Diana and I have said this, it's not going to be an option to do sales without using video in the very near future. Um, we're still, I think, climbing up that adoption curve. But it's a culture shift. I love that. That makes everything so good. I'm going to use that my training. You have to <laughs> totally. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, and I, and I use so just a little bit about my background. So before starting One Mob, I spent eight years at Salesforce.com, which I, you know, has become you know this kind of powerhouse with respect to CRM and sales. And there's so many great folks who've come out of the organization and great leaders who've now come on to do um, you know either amazing books or trends and. The thing that I still take away from Salesforce was that, you know, you have to, it's not just about selling a product anymore. It's about really selling a relationship and helping your customers understand that, hey, I'm going to help you on your journey. And through that, I'm going to stay involved, stay engaged so that you can ultimately get the best outcome. Um, and I talked about this uh, in, in a, another recent blo a blog about, you know, making your customer a hero. And to me, it's, it's about making sure that you're always staying engaged, staying checked in. And, you know, video really is nice because, you know, we would love to be in a world where we could still have that face to face, you know, hand in hand conversation, but that's just not real, especially with the world becoming so global and phone and email, they're not going away by any means, but it's just becoming, you have to be a little bit more careful about when you use it because it's it's becoming, I think, you know, manipulated by a lot of folks who are unfortunately kind of tainting it for the rest of us. Right. So video allows you to kind of still be human, be there without being there, and again, help make sure your customer is not just getting value, but you can make them a hero. Okay, so we have like 10 different roads we could run down on this one, but <laughs> I mean, just so many, but one of the, one of the challenges that our boots on the ground, phone in the hand salespeople who are our dearest, dearest audience, um, 
they struggle with activity. Like they have to do a lot of activity during the day. You know, sometimes 100, 100 different pieces of outreach a day, something like that, or more. Um, so I thought one of the really powerful things that we could talk about is not so much about adoption or culture shift because all those things still need to be addressed. There's still a lot of people who have an adoptive video, but for those who have, what are the ways, Sethi, that you see uh, you can make use of video more efficient um, to sort of speed up the sales process and make people more effective at those outreach jobs? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, so, I mean, again, I think what's really great about video is you don't have to start from scratch. A lot of folks, when they think about video, it's like, okay, I have to have this video strategy, which is gonna require me to like, you know, hire experts and consultants and all this type of stuff. And all of a sudden it feels overwhelming. Even me as, you know, a maker of a video platform and a huge advocate, I can, I can hear that and think, wow, you know, like, especially if you're like a small and medium sized business where you want to differentiate yourself, but you don't have all those resources, it gets overwhelming. So what we try to help people to understand is like, look, you know, you got these devices, everyone has them and they're actually amazing recorders. They have like the best, camera quality that you could pretty much buy unless you're like a you know a videographer so you gotta just use what you currently have and then the thing is is all right well when it comes to recording a video you have to make sure your message is important and this is really interesting because you're seeing a lot of people talking about this on LinkedIn about it's not the medium it's the message which is totally true you got to make sure you're saying things that are going to capture people's attention etc but the reality is is the mediums are becoming you know, some meetings are, mediums are becoming more and more effective than others because, you know, you get constant robocalls. I get constant robocalls and I get like random emails all the time. And it's just, it's hard to kind of, you know, give it the, the respect it requires. So what I always recommend with people who start to embrace video is use what you currently have. Like if you already have a voicemail script that is working well, or if you already have an email template that's working well, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can use that, but then just vision, make it more visual. You know, use that script in what you say. Use that um, template in what you say. And I'm another really big believer in the 80-20 rule. I see a lot of other video platforms out there that tote like this whole, like hold a whiteboard and write someone's name out. I mean, personally, if I was a seller who had 100 calls I needed to make and I had to sit there and write 100 pieces of names, like that's really daunting. So for me, I think about like, look, you don't need to personalize every single video. You can just say, hey, you know, for you and I, Diana, like we met at this event. So we could say, hey, you know what? It was great meeting you at the event. Just want to put a face to a name and just follow up and talk about these three things. That video is going to be so compelling, even though I didn't say your name, Diana. And I think people feel like if you don't say their first name at the very beginning of the video, you can't use it. And I disagree. I think 80% of your accounts are accounts that just want to know you're real and that you're not some automated email. <clears throat> so just being for personal is going to help them see that, allowing them to see your logo and you know all these different things. And then maybe those 10 to 20% accounts where it's really critical. Maybe they haven't been responsive and you're trying to close that deal this month or quarter. Then you're going to take the time to make a personal video. But when you think about things like that, you already, you already start to see how it can become a little bit more efficient. You can drop these videos into like your email cadencing or sequencing tools so that again, you're using what you currently have, but you're just diversifying the medium to be a little bit more personal versus what it currently is today. Mm -hmm. I think um, I, what's, I think one of the issues and the problems we have in sales right now, especially in inside sales is it's kind of um, my impression is it's all or nothing. It's either use, all this automated, you know, word for word script. Here's, you know, it's all impersonal, automated, or it's kind of, well, go figure it out, right? Um, and, and that's the way, certainly with account executives and, and most organizations that aren't a bit inside business, uh, inside um, sales organization, it's go figure it out. I and mean, that's the, that's actually the true nature of most sales organizations, um, not an enterprise because small mid-sized business are the majority of businesses in the country and it really is go figure it out. So I want to point out one of the things that you said was about um, the medium and the message. And so the message is so important. And when, so for instance, when we build sales uh, cadences and follow-up cadences, the first three messages are essentially repetition. 
right? It's essentially saying the same thing because that's how people, they recognize your message. And then medium message consistency. That's what I'm getting to is it's medium message consistency that you keep showing up. And then video allows you that continuity of people experiencing you. Oh, here's what he, here's what he sounds like. Let me put a voice to the face and Oh, we're connected on LinkedIn. Oh, he posted something that's very in line with who I think he is via video. So at scale doesn't mean that you lose the personality. It's just, you can provide more consistency and you can still do it with continuity. That's what I'm, that's what I'm taking away from your, your discussion there. Yeah. And I love that. And I love that framework on how you think about it. Cause yeah, it is about creating that, just that, that flow. And it's funny because there's a lot of times when I started to get more involved with using our product, which obviously we love, um, I would, I, you know, I would go to events and I would meet random people and they, they would have this familiarity of, with me already. And they'd be, oh yeah, 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 I see your, your video. I, I kind of see what you talk about. And it, it kind of just removes that whole cold calling stigma and starts to make things a little bit more warmer. And now all of a sudden it's like, great, you know, I feel like they, they know that I'm just, you know, I'm trying to hustle. Like we're all hustlers. I think people respect, you know, it's like they say, we respect the game. Like people respect the game. When they see people putting the time and effort in, all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know what? I'll give you five minutes. But if this is just like inauthentic and it's just something that is being strewed because of some machine, all of a sudden it's like, well, you're not even putting any effort. So it's like, why should I give you my time? So yeah. for me, it's about, again, being smart, you know, working smarter, not harder, not sitting there like with your camera and recording a hundred videos a day but figuring out where you can add that consistency that flow that continuity um, to just make sure personalization is still there because it really is you know the, the, the theme of the of the last like five to ten years it's like why is everyone obsessing about big data because the more data I have on you I can be more personal to you but if I have all this data and then I send you some automated email it's like right. just you just missed the point, you know? Right? Yeah. I, I'd like to title this period of sales, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of sales technology is actually just making it harder for the rest of us to do a great job. People are so over the automated sequences that don't, I mean, that don't consider anything about them. Diana and I trade terrible emails all the time. Like, listen to this, you know, this, yeah. this, check this crap out. I mean, and we put people in sales jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Hashtag sales jail. <laughs> so I want to ask a question though, Seti. So, um, you know, other people are out there doing, you know, video platforms. Um, and I, you know, I don't necessarily need this to be a pitch for one mob, but there's a particular lens that you're looking through um, with whatever it is that you're creating that makes you know, makes the sales process more um, compelling or imaginative. What, what is your particular angle on video and sales that you bring to the marketplace that, um, that isn't out there with other kinds of platforms? Yeah, I mean, I think when we first started the company our whole stick was like mobile right because again everyone had their iPhone Android and we wanted to be like mobile video super simple like as simple and easy as a snapchat and Instagram and have all the cool filters and now we can do like green screening and all that kind of stuff as well and that is still very much kind of key to our simplicity is just you don't have to have like all this bulky equipment you can use your computer cameras and things like that um, but that was one thing. But, you know, now technology is becoming more and more, you know, ubiquitous. So, and yeah, everyone's kind of using these mobile devices. Um, but what we started realizing probably in the last couple of years was, all right, it's kind of like, you know, the, the, the Trojan horse story, right? Like, I, I give you this nice little gift to get your attention. And then when I get your attention, now, boom, I kind of throw a bunch of stuff at you. But what we started thinking about was videos kind of like that. Because everyone likes watching video, you know, unfortunately, we're at this kind of age in our life where when people go home, they turn on Netflix and they don't read a book as often. And, but the reality is, it's like, it is compelling, like it's visual, like our brains are kind of wired for that. So what we started thinking about is, if I send you a video and all of a sudden you're watching it and I have your attention, then this is a great chance for me to share other things that might help you along your buyer journey. And, yeah. you know, Forrester and all these other analyst firms tell you now that like the average sale sees like 
10 to 12 pieces of content before they close, right? Mm -hmm. White papers, testimonials, et cetera. So what one mob does that I think is very different than a lot of the other platforms out there is we use video to capture attention, but we also allow the sellers to put together the three, four, five, six pieces of content that you are going to care about so that as you're watching your video, you can see all that stuff at the same time and we will track all of that. You know, we don't just track video, we track how much time you view <clears throat> content, presentations, et cetera. So that's been like our big differentiator. And again, it goes back to efficiency, right? Because if I tell a rep to record a unique video, that's one thing. But if I say, hey, you can use kind of generic video and we'll also make sure marketing is kind of giving you the right assets, you can now create, you know, a verticalized page age for, you know, maybe you're going after financial services and this is how you want to speak to them. And these are all the use cases that relevant uh, are relevant to them. Or, you know, maybe you're selling a specific product and you want to have the certain types of assets that are uh, relevant to that. And so again, for us, it's just how do you use not just video, but all the right content in the right way and yeah. then this in a scalable fashion. And, and I think that's really helped us kind of differentiate our platform from the others out there. Well, I just got chills when you, uh, <laughs> I literally got chills when you're talking about being able to sort of add multimedia uh, sort of experience with the video. But the thing that, um, the th thing that popped out at me about efficiencies when you were talking earlier, especially uh, us meeting at a live event, is um, bringing trigger events to your video. So if you're really immersed in your industry and you really understand, understand who your buyer is, they're probably dealing with events that are happening outside of their organization that are impacting their organization where there's probably five or six of those companies where if you made one video that just addressed that one compelling kind of thing that was impacting their business, it, it seems to me like using trigger events for efficiencies is, is really um, a, a possibility. Oh, yeah? absolutely. Oh, totally. I mean, it's, it's about about being relevant right and I think you're totally spot on I mean if if I can talk about you know something that's gonna align to a compelling event or thought you have now yeah. all of a sudden it really just creates I think this tighter um, uh, opportunity for us to really kind of connect in person and then start to talk about something more meaningful and the other thing that I think is really great about video is it's inherently shareable like mm -hmm. video is very easy to forward on yes you yeah. know, I talk a lot about, um, you know, con content and context, right? A lot of people talk about, you know, content is great, but standalone, sometimes it loses its, you know, uh, it, it's, its relevance and its appeal. If I can add context, which is essentially what the video is providing and now say, yeah. hey, this is how it's really going to help you based on what we know about you. Now, all of a sudden, it's like you're giving me this package good that I can essentially turn into my business case. Because when you're selling to, you know, mid-market or higher, you're not selling to one buyer. You're selling to seven buyers. And they're right. ordering this stuff around. And then someone's going to say, well, look, you need to tell me, you know, why this is worth it for a company, why we should make this investment. If I can do all of that kind of heavy lifting up front for the buyer and say, hey, here's a package you know, good for you on a silver platter with all of your objections and all of your pricing and ROI. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden I'm making it easier for the buyer to sell it up the food chain and it's ultimately going to help me as a seller. So right. I just think we can't be like, you, you no longer can think about selling as like, you know, single shots. It's like you have to think of it as a, 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 a continue, continuous flow of information and the easier I can kind of present it to you, with the right context, oh, it's just, it's gonna be beneficial to everybody involved, not just the seller. I'm taking notes. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, the biggest fear that most salespeople have and should have, well, the biggest fear, we have a lot of them, so it's hard to characterize which one's the hardest, but, um, you know, the last thing I want in the whole world is somebody else selling my product internally, because at the very, you know, they, they understand it at the very, very highest level and only through their own lens. So if I have a tool that I can provide that person that is compelling and efficient and says my message quickly to the, to the ears of the person that they would need to, you know, get buy-in from, what a great way to like not have to set another meeting and find times on each other's calendars. It's just all 
sign sealed delivered yeah 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 unfortunately the world is you know becoming more and more about like micro moments i only have 30 seconds for this i only have two minutes for that right. and again you know sending a quick short video with all the relevant content allows them to quickly all right i understand what this is about you yeah. know yeah you know, i can kind of uh, buy into it and, and, and i don't have to talk to a salesperson <laughs> <laughs> yeah and let's talk about you content there for a second because i, I want to do a, a diana a goofus and gallant remember i don't know if you've ever read highlights like here's the goofus did well yeah so my i've got goofus right, video right. going and you've got gallant video going i'm totally yes. familiar <laughs> well so i i want to put that in the frame of content um everybody has content we're drowning in content like being literally email is choking us in content hey here's some more content now we use content to research and, and do due diligence and figure things out but you know like content is the lead generation we're just we're drowning in content but packaging it to be relevant and in context that is the new this is how you use content so here's the example i got an email uh about a month or so ago from in this and it was a series of like seven not seven maybe five emails where the sdr said um thank you for downloading our content like six months ago <laughs> um we would love to talk to you more and answer any questions about our product thank you for your interest or whatever it was but they you know they kept emailing me about i must be interested in their product i wasn't interested in their product i was interested in the content mm. and and i don't even know what it was and i don't remember what their company does right so that's that's goofus what they could have done was said, you know, hey, Sean, thanks for downloading this piece of content and then turn this into a video where she's saying, tell me what you found interesting. How are you going to use the content? How does this apply to your business? Let's right. have a discussion. And then, by the way, here's the content again. Here's the companion piece. So there's, she could have advanced that, at least got my attention. I would have watched the video. It would have yeah. brought me back to a place where they were valuable to me to begin with. And yeah. reminded me what their company does. But as it sits, just putting me in their automated email, you know, chain, um, yeah. where you sent the same message saying, let's set up a meeting. I'm going to answer your questions about a product. I, I have no cares to give about that. You know, it's, it's, there's two different ways to look at that. Using content as a lead, everybody's got content. I don't care yeah. about your content until I care about your content and, and how it, it affects me. So such a great point in that, use it in a way to, to bring in the other content and to the trigger points Diana discussed and to bring you back to where you thought someone was valuable enough to give them your email address to begin with. Yeah. 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 I know. I mean, it's, and it's really interesting because even marketers will tell me that they spend so much time creating this great content. Um, but then sometimes sellers will, you know, kind of go rogue and do something that's maybe not against, uh, that's kind of off, <laughs> the 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 brand or the templates and stuff like that and it's it's kind of just you hear it and it just all logically just doesn't sound it like it's like why would you do that because you as a seller like you were trying to be efficient you only have so much time in the day you should be using resources that are already there for you so why are you guys going rogue and what i what i feel like it's coming down to is is just if you as the seller don't have an easy way to grab the right content in a relevant way and then again add that context it's yeah. just kind of out of sight out of mind and so then all of a sudden you start doing all this stuff on your own and you feel like it's efficient but it's not and then marketing is losing a ton of visibility because again for them it's important to know oh well that content is generating you know buyers like sean let's figure out what we need to be doing to get more of them um right. so i think when you really start to kind of bring it together. Like sales and marketing is like, they should be going hand in hand all the time, but there's always this kind of constant struggle of how to make it more efficient. And I think for us, when we started thinking about video, it's like, whoa, it's like video is a great way to make sure your seller is really front and center and giving them the content that marketing already has just brings the two organizations finally back more aligned. And then, you know, you put all this back into your CRM and management's happy because they can finally see like what's going on you know, it's kind of a win, win, win. So good. Yeah. I, I think that so, so much of the, the, the approach is scattershot, whereas you described it so eloquently selling is it's the continuous flow of information in the right context. 
And so much, especially with SDRs, is about getting that one response, right? Getting them to open and respond, getting them to, you know, getting them on the line, getting them to open up and talk. Whereas I, I think that we really do lose the big picture and that it's like every, every email you send, every phone call, every video, you're leaving footprints, right? I, I, don't, I don't delete a voicemail until I know who it's from, you know, and I don't delete an email until I've at least read the sender and the subject line. So you're building a relationship, even though it's one way, um, you keep building that relationship until something triggers them to respond. It might be the right content, might be the video or whatever. But um, most people think, oh, well, they're not interested. I mean, until they tell you to kind of jump in a lake, they might not be interested, but you are leaving clues. And it's all about that continuity and consistency. They're getting to know you along the way. The sooner, I would love to see some research about this. The sooner you add video to your, your follow-up process, to your cadence, I bet you the sooner you get to that point because they feel like they know you better. Maybe that's a- Oh my God, tough. video in the follow-up process is yeah. golden. It shrink, I mean, my experience, now this is not a survey, but <laughs> my experience is it just like, the sales cycle just collapses. I haven't had a ton of, I haven't had a ton, a ton, a ton of luck prospecting cold with um, video yet which I'd love to learn better, but, um, but man, using it at different places in the sales cycle, especially as follow-up has been really powerful. I have a nice, Absolutely. yeah, about that. I, I have a quick idea about that, Diana and forever. Yeah. Here. So I, I'm collecting research. I'm do, writing a book about, hmm, this is kind of funny. Um, surveying, surveying buyers, budget holding buyers of all different industries, sizes, organizations, titles, levels about, what are the things that salespeople do that drive you crazy? <laughs> so these two things are super, super interesting. When um, I'm almost so close to finishing my research, but when asked, where do you look for information when you're considering a purchase? The, the majority of people, the number one leading answer to this date is uh, but from peers and colleagues. I mean, that's where people look for information. Now, the next question below that is, um, how do you like to be approached by a salesperson? And there's a bunch of different responses. The number one response is a referral or an introduction. So maybe that video prospecting Diana is a referral introduction. Like that's, that's where you could do that and oh, yeah. get a referral. Hey, Sati, this is Sean Sandy from the selling agency. Barbara referred me to you. I'd like to have blah, blah, blah. But maybe that's, that's a great idea for you to do that. Yeah, I mean, um, so going back to your, you know, when to use it, it's interesting because th we're always seeing different use cases. When we started this business, our thought was, hey, I want to get a hold of you and you're not answering my email or respond to my, um, my phone call. I'm going to record a video and send it to you. Now, recording a video straight to a very cold person, it definitely is a little uncomfortable as the recorder. It's like, oh, what am I going to say? Am I going to be, you know, am I going to be treated, you know, uh, judged a certain way? And so, you know, what we try to do is we try to help them think about well, when to use the d different types of videos because video doesn't always have to be about you. It could be like a quick little one minute sizzle video that someone's made about your company and you can just be like, hey, just want to, again, instead of having like a long email that no one likes to read, you can just short it up and say, hey, here's a quick little blurb of who we are. And one of the best use cases that I always think about, especially prospecting is, is you have a hundred people you're about to call. And most of them you don't know. If I can, you know, send you a quick little blast with a little video snippet, and all of a sudden I can see because of in tracking, you know, of those hundred, already forty people have watched it, and I call those forty, especially within like five to ten minutes, like they recommend. All of a sudden it's like, oh hey, that was actually just watching your video. Thanks for calling. This is relevant. And now all of a sudden it starts to become more and more warmer. And then afterwards, you can send a follow up, especially if they're saying, hey, well, let's meet next week. Hey, I just wanted to send a quick video, put a face to your name before we meet. I know you want to talk about these three things. So I wanted to make sure that I have them in front of you and maybe here's some resources that can view beforehand. And now all of a sudden, it's like you are using the right video at the right stage. And I mean, when you start to add things like customer success and onboarding, per, like tons of great use cases there as well. Um, so yeah, look, you have to kind of be okay to try different experiences. Like, Someone told me something I thought this is always stuck. It's like, if you were to tell some, somebody like, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to introduce you to you this phone and you're going to call your clients. 
Um, but you know what? If you get a voicemail, that just means it doesn't work anymore. So put the phone away and try a new tool. It's like, you know, and same with video. People think like, oh, I sent a video out and I didn't get a response. Right. Or I got somebody who said like, hey, don't send me a video anymore. So now I'm never going to use it again. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. You just have to realize that your tools all have a time and place. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, selling is about, it's never about, you know, when, you know, if it's going to happen, it's just about when it's going to happen. Um, yes. I think it's really important people don't get, they don't, they don't get shaken or stirred if like, you know, that first video doesn't do well because there's lots of great use cases out there. Um, and that's awesome you're putting together this book because maybe you can help to highlight some of those. <laughs> yeah, play the long game. I mean, that's what, that's what it's become is we've got to play the long game instead of this scattershot one. You know, I, I like to say there, it does happen, but we can't all be searching for, you know, the magical unicorn one call script. <laughs> this works every time. Or yeah. you know, the email that laid the golden egg. Like, it's, 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 people aren't usually thunderstruck. It's building, it's leaving these little footprints, being familiar. And, you know, this is another interesting thing is when, before I go to train a new group, especially if they're remote, um, and they, you know, the person, the VP of sales or the, you know, managing partners brought me in, I'll send a video. And what I've figured out is two videos gets them to bring their pre-work to the training and be prepared and look forward to it like 75% more time. So instead of just sending one, I send two and they, they feel like they know me already. We skip all that intro stuff and we just go right into jokes and, and getting, you know, getting on with business. It's yeah. phenomenal yeah. how it pulls people closer, pulls, pulls them in. Yeah. I'm, like, you know, human nature, we are relationship people. Like that's what makes yeah. us tick. And you know, video is like one step closer to bringing that back to selling. And you know, I think everyone, you, you'll, you'll hear it more and more nowadays. It's like, it's all about going back to basics. Well, you can't get more basic than like being face to face. And again, if you can't travel around the globe, video like this, you know, live video and, you know, asynchronous video messages is also really powerful. Mm -hmm. So brilliant. Excellent. I think we did it. I think we <laughs> really, really did this one. So, um, so um, Cynthia, thank you so much for being with us. I know, um, I know Sean has, a, well, it used to be the back of the envelope, but we've changed it to the 3M no. question. But before we do that, um, do you want to give a little pitch about how to find you and, um, and where sh people should get a hold of you? Yeah. So, I mean, if they want to connect with me personally, you know, feel free to connect me on LinkedIn. I, I love to kind of not just talk video. I like to just talk about even other business topics and trends. I try to put together this like once every week or every other week, it's called a minute moments. And it's like a one minute little snip on like things that I think are important around how you just excel in business and love it. Check me on LinkedIn. My Twitter handle is really easy. It's just S A T I my first name um, or set the at one mob. If you want to email me. And again, if you are in a position where you're looking to, diversify your outreach and you want to start try leveraging video and content we'd be happy to kind of talk about a plan that works for you awesome yes yes get get on it, get on it. <laughs> yeah. okay so i have this is probably more a unique um back of the envelope post-it note question most okay. of the time it's like tacos or pizza or waffles or pancakes or, you know, martinis or margaritas. But this one's a little more um, personalized. Okay. So, do you or do you not? What is your thought on correcting people when they mispronounce your name? <laughs> yeah. Diana and I have some similar issues. I'm sure Diana, people call you Diane, right? They say Diane. They've you know what they, they call me, and it's totally fair, but they call me De Deanna. Deanna. Oh, yeah. right? I've got two N's. So yes. I, just, I don't correct. Anyway, yes, I'm interested in the question. And Sean, you know. <laughs> well, they don't <laughs> mispronounce names, names. <laughs> but I have three first names. And, and for some reason, Sandy sticks with people. So they'll call me Sandy. And I, there, one woman was introducing, <laughs> introducing me to get up and speak. And as she's talking about me and my bio and doing it with such heartfelt love, she keeps calling me Sandy and everyone's shouting out, it's Sean. It's Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your thought about that? What is, yeah. what is well, your first off, I love, I love the name Sean because my son's name is Sean. Um, 
There you uh, go. But in terms of my name, yeah, look, you know, I, I think that I, if I can correct somebody, I will, but I won't kind of belabor it. You know, I don't want makes, I don't want people to feel uneasy because I know sometimes, you know, I maybe trip on up people's names and I know sometimes you can feel, you know, a little awkward. So I'll try to recommend, you know, the right way of saying it, but at the same time, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I will say I'm definitely forgiving because, um, sure. you know, it's at the end of the day, it's just a name. I think we're a lot more than our name. Um, but yeah, I mean, like if it happens, I'll try to connect you, but if it's, you know, happened multiple times, like I'm not going to really like, you know, be a stickler on it. I'll even let it slide. I mean, people, I, I used to be called Saudi, Saudi, like lots of different names. So like, you know, as long as you want to hang out, that's all that matters. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Awesome. I love All that. Right. Well, I'm going to kick us out of here. What do you think, Sean? Let's do it. Let's wrap this thing up in a bow because it was pretty. <laughs> All right. So stop hoping. <laughs> and start selling. That's right. Bye, everybody. Bye.